What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to use program changes in Logic Pro X to control positive grid bias FX. Uh, using program changes will allow you to automatically switch bias patches, similar to how program changes work with an Axe FX unit. It took me a little bit of tinkering to figure out how to set this up, so I wanted to make a quick video about it and show you some of the things you can use it for. Let's head over to the computer and check it out. Alright, so here we are in Logic. And first thing we're going to do is create a software instrument track. All right, now that we have our software instrument track, we're going to instantiate bias effects. Uh, and you're going to do this by going down to AU MIDI controlled effects and selecting bias effects. All right, now that we have bias effects open, we need to assign patch change numbers to the patches we want to use. So, uh, just to give you an example, I have a rhythm tone, a lead tone, and a clean tone, and I have them assigned to patches 1, 2, and 3. So the way you're going to assign patches is going up to the patch you want to use, clicking Edit, and then selecting the MIDI channel or MIDI program change you want to use. So as you can see, I have this on channel 2. Okay, next thing we're going to do is put in our program changes. So first thing I'm going to do is just quickly pencil in a MIDI region, and then I'm going to hit D, open up the uh, event menu. I'm going to click here and change it from note to program change. Then we're going to select our MIDI region and press plus. All right, so as you can see, we've just created a program change. And let's say we wanna to switch to the lead patch. We're gonna change the value of our program change over to two. And as you can see, it made the change. One thing that's important to note is that you need to make sure bias is on the same MIDI channel as your program changes. So you can do this by heading over to MIDI settings, making sure MIDI control is enabled, and making sure you're on the correct MIDI channel. In my case, I'm just using channel one, and as you can see, I'm on channel one. Okay, now that we have the MIDI set up, let's talk about the audio side of things. So the way you're going to get audio into bias effects is going up to the side chain actually, and then selecting the input that you use for your guitar. So let's say I was using input uh, one. We can plug that in, and this is actually my microphone, but you can see we're getting signal into bias FX. So to give you an idea of how this works, what I'm going to do is copy out this program change, and I'm going to actually change this one to value one, which is my rhythm patch. So now when I hit play, you'll see that the program changes are gonna play through. There is my lead patch. And there is my rhythm patch. So the way I usually use this is by taking a track that I'm practicing with, I'll just drop in a MP3 for example, and then copying out uh, my program changes. So let's say for instance, I wanted this song to start with a clean tone. What I could do is create another MIDI region, add a program change, uh, channel three in this case, that's my clean tone, and put it at the beginning. So now we are on our clean intro. When we move into, let's say this is the heavy verse, it's gonna switch over to my rhythm patch. And then uh, let's say I wanna do some lead. I could have that happen. Then I would paste in, I guess my rhythm again and so on and so forth. One thing I will say about this method though is it can be a little bit glitchy at times and the program changes aren't instantaneous. So there's gonna be a little delay while the program switches. Uh, that's why I like to use this for practice because in a live setting, having the delay between program changes isn't really gonna work. Besides that though, this is just a super useful thing you can use to improve your practice routine. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. Just wanted to make a quick tutorial to show you guys how to do this. I didn't really see any other tutorials on YouTube for this specific thing, so uh, I hope this video helps some of you guys out. Stay tuned for more audio and music-related content. Peace.